Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at WaveShare's all new 15.6 inch Raspberry Pi powered laptop. I've been following this project for a little while now. I've been trying to get my hands on one, but since there's some crazy stuff going on in the world right now, production was slowed way down. But I finally got my hands on one to take a look at, so that's what we're going to do today. Like I mentioned, I've been following this for a while and everything they've released so far as of images and spec sheets looks pretty decent for a 15.6 inch Raspberry Pi powered laptop. Now unfortunately, this is not powered by the Raspberry Pi 4. It's actually powered by the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 3 Plus. And when this was first announced, I was really, really hoping this was a Raspberry Pi 4 laptop because having a laptop with a form factor like this and a Raspberry Pi 4 would have been absolutely amazing. But we are working with the lower powered variant, which is the Compute Module 3 Plus. Basically, a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. Quad core at 1.2 gigahertz, it can be overclocked with one gig of RAM. But I do have to say, they've done a great job in building this thing. Now the bottom is made out of plastic. It does have an aluminum top shell, a 15.6 inch IPS anti-glare 1080p screen. We have a nice keyboard here. And overall, the quality of the product is top notch when it comes to one of these Pi powered laptops. I've tested a lot of them on my channel and this looks to be one of the best builds that I've seen so far. Let's go ahead and power this up before we take a look at the accessories and go over the specs. And upon the first boot, as soon as that screen came on, I can tell you that this is a really nice panel. I've tested laptops that were a bit more expensive than this with worse screens. We'll get a closer look at it in a second, but overall, it's 15.6 inch anti-glare IPS at 1080p, and I think it was a great choice for a Raspberry Pi powered laptop. And as for the keyboard, it's non-backlit, it's got good spacing, it's got decent feel to it. I was actually expecting a little less out of this, but uh, it's pretty decent. It's not top of the line, but it will get you by. So I need to charge this battery up, I also need to do some updating. So while that's going on, let's take a look at the accessories. So this does come with a few extras. First up, we have the power supply, 12 volts at 3 amps. That's going to charge the internal battery on the laptop. We also have a micro USB cable. Not sure what this is for just yet. A GPIO breakout board. And I believe we should also get a ribbon cable for this because it does have a spot to connect this GPIO board. So we can access the 40 GPIO pins that usually come on a full-size Raspberry Pi. And I think that's in this little bag here. It's an 8 to 10 inch ribbon cable. They've also included a wireless mouse here, and this is rechargeable, so that's where that micro USB cable will go, or that's what it's for. A micro SD card reader, and a screwdriver. And that's about it for the accessories. So yeah, the layout on this is just like basically any other 15.6 inch laptop. We're just powered by an ARM CPU because we have that Raspberry Pi compute module in here. And by the way, this does have Wi-Fi built in because the compute module doesn't include it. It also has a 2 megapixel integrated webcam, and the software was already pre-installed here. It's Raspberry Pi OS with some WaveShare software installed for battery indicators and things like that. Over on the left-hand side, we have our charging port, a single USB 2.0 port, and a proprietary firmware upgrade port. Over on the right-hand side, we have a micro SD card port, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, two USB 2.0 ports, and full-size Ethernet. So I haven't mentioned anything about the trackpad yet because to my surprise, this actually isn't a trackpad. When I first booted this up, I tried using it. Then I did a little bit of research on their website. And unfortunately, this is not a functional trackpad for the laptop. This black piece here is just a cover. We're gonna pull this off. We have three ribbon cable ports, two cameras, one for the GPIO breakout board, and we also have an LED matrix. And this was really surprising to me. I actually thought the trackpad was broken at first or wasn't functional inside of the operating system we have installed here. So I started doing some research and on their website, the product page clearly states that this is not a functional trackpad. So they weren't trying to hide anything here. It's just something that I missed. I mean, it's a laptop with a trackpad looking area. I figured it was a trackpad. And this is definitely going to be a big letdown to a lot of people. I mean, if it had a touchscreen built in, I could really overlook this. But overall, we're supposed to have a laptop here, but we need a mouse connected to it. And I know a lot of people use their laptops with an external mouse, but I really do think that this should have been a functional trackpad on this setup. So here we are. It booted up fine. It's got a 32 gigabyte micro SD card inside of it, and it's already set up with all of the proprietary drivers that you need for this, like the battery indicator and the LED matrix. I just ran NeoFetch, I'll go ahead and zoom in so we can take a look at the specs, and I do have to say, this screen looks absolutely amazing. It's definitely big enough for a laptop like this. It's 1080p, 
IPS, and I think it has some really good colors. I do have the brightness jacked all the way up. Can control the brightness using a function key. F9 will lower it. F11 will bring it on up. So yeah, I mean, basically what we have here is a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus powered laptop. Now, for the Raspberry Pi, we're using that Compute Module 3 Plus, which has the same amount of RAM, 1 gig, and the same quad-core 1.2 gigahertz ARM CPU. So anything that you could do on the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, you can do on this laptop here. So if you did want to run retro games on this or install a different operating system, you could totally do it. If you go over to WaveShare's wiki page, you can find all of the settings you need to add to the config.txt, and it actually works out really well. Unfortunately, like it sits right now, there's more development going on for the Raspberry Pi 4 than the 3, and that's a big letdown for a laptop like this. Because as you know, if you're into the Raspberry Pi right now, everybody's buying up the Raspberry Pi 4. So the compute module itself that's powering this laptop doesn't have Wi-Fi built in, but the laptop itself does have a module, and unfortunately, the module that is built into the laptop is only 2.4 gigahertz. And it's not fast at all, but WaveShare says that they're going to be sending an AC USB dongle along with each one of these. And in my opinion, that kind of defeats the purpose of having an all-in-one laptop, because now we have a mouse plugged in and a USB Wi-Fi dongle taking up two ports of the three that we have on the side of this thing. And as you can see here, speeds aren't great, upload or download. And by the way, I'm only 10 feet from my router right now, and I have a good router and a decent internet connection. And on most of my devices, when I connect over 2.4, I can get much higher speeds than this on download and upload. So it's got dual stereo speakers built in. We do have volume control from the laptop itself. So this is kind of the amp itself being adjusted through the laptop. We also have adjustment in the operating system that we're using. And it's kind of the same thing with the brightness. We can use a function key to lower the brightness and raise it up. So running internet test speeds with the built-in Wi-Fi here isn't great, but it doesn't affect web browsing all that much. It will affect downloading big updates and things like that. But with the Raspberry Pi, you're really not going to be streaming 1080p video all day long anyway. I'm going to set this to 480, and loading up YouTube works just fine. And another thing I noticed, this included mouse is one of the cheaper ones, and it's not working great at all. And I am using a mouse pad here because it wouldn't work at all on this white surface. Now I do want to mention that this is not marketed as a media consumption device or a gaming device whatsoever. This is marketed for education and development and I could actually see this working out pretty well in a classroom like it sits exactly like it is. But that doesn't mean there won't be people out there that are trying to pick these up as an alternative to a Windows machine or something like that. And when it comes down to using this as an everyday laptop, I personally couldn't do it. If I just needed it for email checking and web browsing and that's all, then I might be able to get by with something like this, but for most people out there, it might be a bit slow. If you're not used to using a Raspberry Pi or a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus for that matter, then you're going to notice that this is a bit slower than even an Atom CPU running Windows. Before I wrap this up, I did want to give you a quick look here at the Compute Module. It's actually really easy to access, so when they do release the Compute Module 4, as long as it's the same form factor, it should theoretically work with this laptop and uh, it would be a nice upgrade for something like this, most definitely, especially a Compute Module 4 like this with 4 gigs of RAM. Hopefully, those do come out soon. And as of making this video, there's no upgrade to the 3 Plus module that I have here. I mean, you'd only be downgrading with a Compute Module 3. So in the end, it's really hard for me to recommend this. Of course, I do love the form factor here for a Raspberry Pi powered laptop. The screen looks absolutely amazing, but having that fake trackpad and no AC Wi-Fi built in in 2020 is definitely a big letdown. And it's going to be a hard sell on their end because the price point they have this at. If you're ready for it, we're going to move over there right now. And for the model you've seen in this video with the Compute Module 3 Plus, 32 gigabyte micro SD card, and this 15.6 inch display, Base price on this is $340, or $339.99. And that's really high, especially considering that you can pick up a 3rd gen Ryzen laptop or even a 10th gen i3 for around the same price, in some cases, even lower than $340. So yeah, I mean, I really can't recommend this, especially at the price point they have it at. If this was sitting at $199, it might be a good choice for some people, but then, in the end, you're still working with the last generation Raspberry Pi. And me, personally, going into this, I knew what kind of performance to expect, but I was actually expecting AC Wi-Fi built-in and a real trackpad. I probably should have read the fine print a little better, but this might confuse some people, so I'm glad I actually got a hold of one, 
and was able to make a video on it. But that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.